So yeah, the mouth. So you guys, the mouth is your second like focal point. Like we go, you go eyes as uh, people, and the next thing we focus is the mouth. So it's super important. It supports the face. It matches the emotional state. So, you know, your eyes can be sad, but if they're sad and have a smiley face, it's different than ha- than being sad and having a sad face. You know, uh, sorry, being sad and having a sad mouth, like. Fr- so it's really important for emotional stage uh, state. It is super flexible. Like the mouth is super flexible for like the whole compared to the cranium. You guys can do a lot more with this part of the face than you can with, you know, anything above there. Uh, I don't know if you guys seen the How to Train Your Dragon Three. This guy is like a perfect example of how we can add character with like uh, the mouth, the way he speaks, with his lips. It's a really great, great place to add character. Again, if you guys look at Grimmel, just it's a good example. Now, when you're in games, that's probably not going to be as as important. And also, if you like work on very realistic stuff, you probably can animate the mouth in a realistic way. You can still cheat it. I think it's a great example. Like if you, if you guys look at, I don't know, I think the Detective Pikachu. That was one of the things. One of my friends was saying that he applied for a Pikachu, and because he only had feature reel, they didn't, uh, they didn't, they didn't chose him for the job. And then he was like, he was mad at, he was mad at him. He was like, it's a cartoon. I don't get this. It's a cartoon. <laughs> Pikachu's a. It's... Anyway. Yeah, the mouth usually like in the more VFX places, you're gonna see that you're not gonna be cheating a lot of the corners. In VFX, there's usually a lot of sliders. So you'll be sliding certain controls and muscles to like achieve a certain shape. So it doesn't allow a lot of cheating. Like the anim school rigs are pretty flexible. That's why we cheat them, because you want to get the maximum appeal out of them. So the jaw, the corners, and the lips, you guys, those are like just stages that you can focus on. The jaw is usually the thing to animate first. Now, there are exceptions where you would find sometimes, you know, you you have this great expression where maybe you you've opened the mouth like quite a bit, like maybe you've opened the jaw like like this, but your mouth is closed, right? So we can't always say that like every time you open the jaw, your mouth is gonna open. Sometimes you know your lips can be sealed, and the mouth can open. It's not really a rule. Every time the jaw opens, the mouth is gonna open. The jaw is used to um, emphasize phrases. So meaning when you guys have like a very, it depends on your on like the audio that you have, but you have a very chattery audio. You're gonna find out that your you're gonna be over animating the jaw, so you're gonna have a lot of movement. It's gonna be like this, and it's gonna be sort of it's gonna look a little jarring. Like even if you're hitting every single mouth shape, uh, you might get like you know the supervisor might be like, oh, like the, the you know the chin is moving way too much, tone it down. And then you'll be like, I don't get it. I was just hitting every single you know phoneme or every single sound I was hearing. There's a also there's a significant difference between cartoony and realistic mouth animation, meaning that in cartoony the rules are broken a little more. With the open and the closed mouth, sometimes you can open the mouth a little bit and create an, a large ah sound, like ah, but sometimes you can open it, you know, quite a bit and create a smaller sound just because you wanted to create a certain expression. Uh, and in realistic animation, that's less done, meaning VFX. They approach things a little more realistically. Yeah, think about the sounds, not the letters, meaning that you guys want to focus on how things sound, meaning if a character is saying, Something like, I have to go. If someone's saying, I have to go, you're going to hit that V sound. But if someone's saying, I have to go, now it's way faster and the V sound is not, not as loud. So then you'll be like, I have to, you'll go straight from the, the A sound to the U. So you'll skip that V shape because you don't want to make the mouth too chattering. Or because there's just not enough time. If you look at your audio, they'll just the V just goes in one frame. So it's sort of like, there's no need. There's no need to hit a sound for one frame because nobody's going to see it. Phonemes on top of expressions. This is something that we can talk about a little more. But it's it's basically if you have an expression that like Rick, for example, your expression when the vampire is really really angry and the mouth is really down. You know, you have like they 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 always have been always been hated by skeletons. So hated by skeletons. So he would keep that negative mouth, and all the animation is going to be happening in that hated. You know. Bye. You're gonna have that B, and maybe you're gonna have bye skeletons. You know, all of that's gonna happen in a lot of like the one shape. So you guys gonna have to think about you've put those expressions, you've put those shapes for a reason, but now you need to make sure that like they connect in a nice way. We tend to overcomplicate or oversimplify the mouth in the blocking pass, meaning that when you're spline, you're gonna see your mouth either swimming or it's gonna be deforming too much. If it's deforming too much, you need to take off some shapes and sort of identify a shape they want to stick to. So 
I don't know, Rick, for example, in, in your shot, if you have like too many blocked different uh, facial expressions, uh, sorry, mouth shapes, they might your teeth might swim or your lips might deform too much. So you might want to remove some and then focus on the one that's like very, focus on the one that you want to like close the, close the, the jaw, move the corners out, you know, move the lips a little bit. That way you're going to have like a more consistent mouth and it's not going to like swim all over. Now with the dialogue, it's sort of a similar thing. This is from, I think it was the illusion of life or I think it's the illusion of life. Not really sure. But uh, just take a look at it in this image. It's just showing you like some of the vowels and the consonants and how similar, you know, C, D, G, K, N, R, S, T look. Now we can hit those shapes, but there's different degrees of hitting them. And it's also like your mouth, like sometimes when you say stuff, your mouth is not always going to be like in a happy, it's not always going to be happy when you sing stuff. Sometimes you might have a frown and you might be saying the same things. So obviously those shapes are not going to be the same. You know, there's like a, that's why I put like the image next to on the second part, because you got, you guys have a kiss, you have a pucker. So a lot of the times when we do O, U, W, like O, U, U, your mouth, you tend to pucker your lips. Those puckers, they don't have a feeling. Like you can't do a smiley U, which just is it, very weird to do it. Or a negative U, which just doesn't, like you can force it, but it's, it would never appear as natural as like a normal pucker. So yeah, those those usually don't have like positive or negative value on the on the corners. It's usually neutral. We we're also talking about the mouth in terms of like shaping the corner on the side. So like if you guys have like a three quarters face, you want to push that corner. I've been I mean we've been talking about this. If you guys have obviously know this, but if you look at the third image of the way they've cheated the mouth, it's more of a two D approach. Now not every rig is going to be able to do that, and you know when whenever your rig is like whenever we're not like three quarters and we end up more in like. Uh, let's say more straight or like like this. You don't want to cheat that corner too much because it's just too hard and it's going to create creases. So that's when you're going to reserve to more similar sort of mouth, but you want to favor one of the sides so your mouth is a little asymmetrical. It just sort of keeps keeps it looking appealing. And you know we talked about this asymmetry is appeal. So you guys want to keep that in mind. This was like a cool image that I found uh, online. This guy tried to match the expressions of the guy from Tangled. Pretty good job overall, I think. But we can look at some places where, for example, this one where he's yelling, the fourth one. You can see how clear here the teeth wrap around the tongue, and there's like a gap between the top and the bottom. But here, the bottom ones just sort of flow towards the top. I don't know if you guys can see my arrow. Can you see it? It's right here. Yeah. So in that image, you can sort of see the teeth going pretty up, and they're like almost like they're connecting to the, the top ones, basically. You want to avoid that. You want to keep it more like how he kept in the third shape. That's how it's like, it's more appealing. It's similar thing that's happening on this one. You could have just rotated the teeth a little bit and just get like a little more appealing shape. Like looking at references online, it's a great place to just search for uh, appealing mouths. There's not much of a rule. I know you guys are expecting like much of a rule for the mouths, but I can only give you like drovers and help you out in this way. It is kind of hard to, this. Like, the mouth is such a like, it's a flexible part of the face. It's very flexible and can be influenced by a lot of things. 